Welcome to my first video of 2025. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a list box to an Excel worksheet, and then how to take the selected item from said list box and use it as selection criteria. I'm using a made up scenario which is based on a real life question. And I did tell my client that using a drop down list would have been a lot simpler than a list box. It's easy to implement and it takes up a small amount of space on the screen, but they wanted the entire list to be visible. And as they say, the customer is always right. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the practice file from the link in the description below. So here's my data. It's sales data from January to May 2022. I've already converted it into a table which I've named sales. On a separate sheet, I've added the locations of the stores and these will be used to populate the list box. Although there's no VBA involved in this solution, I still need the developer tab displayed. In Excel on the Mac, select Excel, then Preferences and then click on the ribbon and toolbar icon. Scroll down the right hand list and make sure there's a tick in developer. By default, there won't be, but I've already got the developer tab visible. By the way, if you're using Windows, it's slightly different. So I'll just cancel that and close the preferences. To add the list box, click on the developer tab on the ribbon and click on the list box icon. Move the mouse into the spreadsheet and you'll notice the mouse point has become a little black cross. All I'm going to do is click anywhere and it creates me a list box. I can resize it and I can move it later. To populate the list box, right click anywhere on that list box, select format control and set the input range. The input range is where the items are coming from, which in this case is A2 to A8. I also need to specify a value for the cell link. Now I can pick any cell, but I'm going to pick A10. The cell link is the cell that stores the selected value and then click on OK. So now as I select an item from the list box, a number is placed into A10. And this number represents the position of the selected item in the list box. So how do I get the name of the city? I need another formula, which I'll place in A11. Before I do that, I'm just going to resize and move the list box. So if I right click on the edge of it, it brings up a menu. I'm going to press escape to clear that menu. But because I've still got the little markers around the list box, I can just move the list box to wherever I want it. I'm also going to resize it to make it not as wide, but to make it taller. And then click away from it. So back to the formula. This is the formula that I've put into A11. The index function looks at the range A2 to A8 and returns an item from that range. The item it returns is based on the value in A10. So if A10 contains the value 6, it returns the sixth item from the list starting at A2. Ultimately, I want to know the total revenue for the selected item. I want to Excel to add up all the numbers from the revenue column in the table called sales, where the location matches the value in A11. And that's what the sum ifs function is used for. And I'm going to place that function in D2. So this is the sum ifs function. As I said, it's going to add up the numbers in the total revenue column of the table called sales, where the customer location in that table matches what's in A11. So now as I select different values from the list box, you can see it changes what's in A10, it changes what's in A11, and it changes the figure in column D. What I would do finally is I would then hide column A. 
I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like more Excel tips and tricks, check out my website at theexceltrainer.co.uk. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. But until then, have an excellent day.